back to the thing yeah this was a very small change that they also added as to if i sorry if i remember correctly yeah i think oh shit i think i undid his change no i think it's it again uh, i'm just trying to make my way um back to back no to i back think uh, i believe that i um did a force push just now and Oh, as any as looks again. Oh, as okay, so that's there. All right. Weird. No, I I I somehow nuked it. I'm gonna fix that. No, no, no. I don't want that. I fixed some white space so we could make the next change, and that didn't work, right? So, are there any challenged changes in this document in the first place, or do we have to check for that right now? Or is it already agreed on? I actually don't know anymore. Uh, um, there was there was just that one comment, and Dave seemed to be okay with the other part. Um, come on, there you go. Okay, so um, the white space changes. So uh, the the issue was, what are we going to do with this? Is probably non controversial. Um, the issue is these other three points here, which seem particularly difficult to put in. Dave, we can't hear you. No. Oh. Was so, so I, I made a proposal to address all of that stuff. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, all right. That's so one of your... Whole, there's a whole pull request there that takes care of, at least I believe it addresses that. Uh, okay, so Lawrence, I hadn't really pulled that up to see what you did, and you didn't reference ticket one one six, so it didn't connect. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't realize. I, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. So it's a basically a pretty substantial um, change. It to is. The yeah. Privacy consideration section. So what I did is was I put some exemplary changes. That's just about how uh, terms are used in here. I hope you don't mind, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Th th those changes, fun. those changes seemed mostly good. I, I haven't really. I mean, I just woke up and looked at them, so I haven't really uh, yeah. gone through them in and detail. But um, yeah. it, it is so the actual the content wise um, comments here are from Dave. That's why I also did not do too much work on this because I wanted to wait uh, for uh, content. Um, comments and uh, maybe Dave is now with us. Uh, the audio, no, we still can't hear you, Dave. Darn. Could it be your uh, another mute switch? Yes, yeah, another mute switch. Oh, the wrong mic. You know, anything else? Yeah, we got you. <laughs> hey, weird. Okay, so it must be something with my headphones. I took off the headphones and it's not muted. Okay. All right. Um, now I can start All right. paying attention. All right. So uh, Lawrence actually propo proposed this 130 as the answer to uh, Kathleen's privacy considerations. I I wouldn't have gone so far, but um, uh, yeah, I, let's I had a number of problems here. With it, so. Where do you want to start? Your your the top of your comments here. Yeah. 
Well, the, the first one is the second comment. I think the original text in red needs to stay at the top. PII is not the only aspect of privacy. It's just an important subset. And so you can see previously it talked about privacy. And in the green, it replaces it by introducing PII as the first thing. That's a subcase. We need to talk about the more general case. You can see the red text was more general. So an example would be, let's say you have a, uh, a uh, uh, IoT device that's important for uh, national defense, right? The GPS location may be considered privacy sensitive, but it's certainly not PII. Okay. And so we need to start with a general and then go down to the specific and not start with a specific and generalize is, is my point. And the old text did that. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'd agree with that, but I mean, I understand your point there, uh, Dave, that, um, that, that there's privacy goods, things that are, might be privacy related that are not um, PII because it's personal. Correct. It's the P is personal. Is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can see previously it didn't talk about in any, remember the, the one that uh, we were just on. Uh, the phrase that was added, you know, as well as any users associated with the device, right? It talked about uh, uh, information about the device itself may be considered privacy sensitive. Something like that was the the, the phrase that was the uh, unaugmented phrase, the previous one. But yeah, and so having that be the first sentence, I don't think that's the best way to start off. Yeah, okay. Um, that's why I didn't like the n major reordering and changes of this uh, PR for that reason. So that, I mean, that first paragraph, um, to me, that pr first paragraph was specific because it, because of the, for example, about the weak firmware version, that is a, to me, that was a, a, um, specific thing, but I, I understand your point uh -huh. and I think we can, I think I can reword to, um, I'm, I'm not going to reword on the fly here because I, I, I don't do yeah, yeah. Like that, but um, I think it can, re can reword to um, address that. Yeah, I think the, you know, it's fine to have a for example or whatever, but at least for example, wasn't the first sentence, right? And so uh, you, you are correct that the for example up above is just a sub case, right? That's why it starts with for example, right? So yeah. well, you could say, you know, for example, you know, person identifying information, blah, 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 but that's just a for example. So, so, so get, just, to, just to fill it in for me to be sure I'm understanding. So there's um, what, uh, give me a few examples of what you're thinking of. You, you said, um, I mean, the, the, the one example, you know, it's PIA, so it's identifying the person. That's one yeah. thing. It's another, another uh, issue is, uh, you know, identifying uh, vulnerable things to um, attackers. Yeah, the other, uh, example, the other example that I mentioned just a minute ago was uh, the GPS coordinates of something can be privacy sensitive for uh, defense industry uh, devices. Yeah, okay, because you don't yeah. want to know where exactly. that submarine is. <laughs> exactly, where's the submarine, where's the tank, right? Things like that. If you can uh, sniff the network and get a GPS location, uh, that can be uh, considered privacy sensitive, yes. Uh, it, goes, it goes beyond defense, you know? Yeah. Where's, the, where's, the, where's, the, where's the security guard? Where is the police? Where are the, you know, all sorts of things that. Exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. So that's why GPS location is a fairly obvious one, but you could make the same uh, claim about many other types of claims that might come up. So GPS is very obvious to explain to people. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, I mean, my intuition is that that didn't fall under privacy, but um, <clears throat> it's more of a, like a confidentiality thing, but it seems, I mean, I don't need to make a fuss about that at all. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what do we think are the goals are? We're, we're certainly not going to solve privacy with this, right? Um, this is to motivate why you can have things like uh, end -to -end encryption. Yeah. All right. And so the fact that you can use, say, a, uh, you know, COSE encryption with EAT, uh, this is just to motivate why that's important. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. So there's, so confidentiality is important. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the tool, toolkit, right? Yeah, yeah. And just like you can use 
Kose objects without encryption, but here's what you'd get if you try. You should think about this. So, yeah, and the PR does say that. I mean, yeah. it's actually fairly fairly strongly says yeah. you, you need encryption. Yeah, exactly. And so this is just explain. I mean, the the question about what's the intent of the privacy considerations section is to have uh, some motivation as to uh, things that different use cases would consider important and why implementers should pay attention to it. And in particular, when uh, encryption is not mandatory. Here is things that you should think about as to why you should do encryption. Yeah. Previous text didn't say that. Uh, I think the previous text did. I think the previous yeah. uh, Kathleen's point about the previous text is it didn't cover the PII point. And so to me, that's just a sub point that I would add uh, later on down in there, not part of the uh, you know the introduction part of it. So 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 I took uh I took some of Lawrence's text and I've added it there that I don't know what you said. You don't think we can deal with all of it. Um, I, I like what you did, Michael. That looks great. Okay. So I think just wondering if there's more text I can grab that improves the situation. Uh, remembering that we're going to publish right after this yeah, uh, yeah. call. Um, and so if Lawrence wants to continue to improve it, then I strongly I encourage that, uh, but I want to kind of be able to close off at least this 116 problem. Mm -hmm. um, so the next two points where the scope of access needs to be emphasized, and then this is about including administrator access to data. I don't know what to do with that. And is there a way to make inferences about attestation from their processing that should be noted as well? I'm not sure what that means, do you? Um, so by virtue of the fact that you got to enter the amusement park, uh, the, I must therefore infer that you were at least 48 inches tall or that you had a measure, a, a height measuring device as part of your equipment. Um, so if I understand your uh, interpretation of Kathleen's point, that, okay. th that is, um, information about the actions taken by the relying party, not the actions taken by attestation. But it sounds like what's going on is you're trying to say is the attacker there is trying to infer um, some knowledge of what the appraisal policy is. All right. To say maybe you maybe say if you knew that the if you knew that the criteria was 48 inches or taller to ride this ride, then you can make his inferences. But in order to do that, you have to understand the appraisal policy is 48 inches. Yeah. So it's this point here. Is there a way to make inferences about attestations from their processing? Uh, that could be a that could that could be referring to, you know, uh, timing attacks on crypto protocols kind of thing, um, or I don't know what. Right? Yeah, I'm not sure what to say there. But if you have an idea, no, I have no idea what to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just like not even sure I know that do know what the problem is. So. Um, so, so, I mean, I, I mean, to some degree, cover, that that's covered by just saying that all claims are potentially uh, have privacy issues. Um, yeah. So, if we're just trying to make Kathleen happy, because uh, your description is, you know, maybe hypothetical, but uh, if we don't know anything to say, then we could just roughly repeat her sentence, you know, without explaining why. You could say, in some cases, there may be you, uh, an attacker may be able to make inferences about attestations from the uh, behavior uh, uh, of a, you know, from the communicate, from the behavior of a relying party in response to an attester or something like that. Sure. It, which doesn't explain anything, but it does say the point and leaves it up to the reader to figure it out. So uh, I don't know if we think that would be helpful or not, but if we're just trying to make Kathleen happy to have this point in there, then that's the only thing I can think of. So, so just to understand, so if the the you find out the guy is four feet high because uh, well, the, the, the attestation is accepted and you know the policy because you you you're oh. just, uh, C correct because you got to know the policy in order to make that inference, right? You have to know what the criteria is for acceptance, and then by based on it's accepted, you can infer something about the party uh, about well, the tester well, if you know well, the policy. Take, take, take a, let's mix some PII in here, okay? Um, the gay bar accepted you in through their front door. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but if you, I mean, in that particular case, if you don't have attestation, you just have authentication, then you'd be able to infer the same thing. It's just if you don't have an appraisal policy, it's kind of you know built in that if you can authenticate, then there's a policy. Uh, and you'd still be able to make that same thing. And adding attestation to it um, doesn't actually change that. Okay. Um, the uh, <clears throat> so, so, so the transgendered female bar accepted a person that you thought observed to be male through their front door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. All, all I'm saying is that I th that in general, I think any case you can come up with for this one, um, I could probably make the same argument that you could draw the same inference if authentication was used for uh, for appraisal rather than attestation. <clears throat> right. In which case you have a database of who's who meets, meets exactly. the category and who does not. Yeah, right. I understand that that point and that attestation. We always know that that right that. That, that's probably the case for most devices and most attestations that you could make an extensive database of what of of you know what things are in a good state and what are not. So right, the only difference is this is far more scalable because now the relying party doesn't have to have that database, right? Yes, exactly. This is about scalability and about right. Uh, so I claim ability. So I guess my observation is that attestation does not change the privacy consideration. It just makes it be more scalable. Right. So I think what we want to say is that privacy is something, you know, the pr privacy considerations apply at every role in the architecture. And, and so, and maybe we could detail that with some, with some, you know, examples, but th the general idea is that the, the attester, if, if the attester is privacy, aware, then it will not uh, collect privacy sensitive claims in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the tester can collect privacy sensitive chain claims. It just encrypts it and uh, the overall solution has to have an assumption that the decryptor of those information preserves the privacy according to whatever the requirements are. <clears throat> so I didn't finish yet. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So the the verifier also potentially plays a role in privacy in that the it may be in possession of privacy sensitive information in which case the the uh, it's trusted to preserve some some privacy policy. We're not stating what that is, but in 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 a deployment, uh, you, know, you can you, you can make choices about which verifiers you use based on their willingness to protect privacy sensitive information. Okay. Yep. And then the relying party uh, also plays a role in that it chooses to, to uh, implement behaviors that are uh, consistent with the privacy policy of the user. So any of those, any and all of those can be used in some way to, to implement a privacy policy or a privacy strategy. <clears throat> um, and it's kind of, you know, it's up to the implementers and the users to figure that out. Yep, I think. Yeah, I agree with yeah, everything you said. To... Except, yeah, I agree with everything that you said, except for when you said something like, "and a tester won't collect privacy sensitive claims." And well, what I'm saying, case, just about any claim can be privacy sensitive. Not all of them, but just about any. So I don't. It's know. possible. It's possible to write an attester that that is aware of privacy sensitive values and yep. choose not to disclose them. That is disclose, a strategy. But as long as disclose means send them in clear. No, it can just say, hey, I, didn't, I didn't see this. <laughs> I didn't see this value. It can do that. Yeah, I agree with that. You just uh, you just omit the privacy sensitive stuff. Yeah, and, you know, and maybe the maybe the verifier needs that information, but you know you can't have everything all the time. Right. <laughs> right. You can just choose to not communicate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So I, I mean I think I covered most of what you said in the uh, uh, Ned in the in the PR. I mean okay. I, I think it's mostly covered. 
<clears throat> so yeah, I haven't read that completely through. So maybe. Um, so M Michael, I noticed you added the sentence from Kathleen. Although, um, uh, personally, I would prefer augmenting it with my observation. If you guys agree, which is uh, yeah. the the fact, but. Uh, such, I don't know how to phrase it yet, because my original point is probably not how I would phrase it in a document, but my original okay. point is um, you could have done the same thing with um, with authentication, just less scalably, but I don't know how to say that here. Uh, yeah, okay. So Good. this is almost another point. But it's part of that same point, I yeah. think. Is, I mean, say it might be a second sentence or another comma phrase or something. I don't know. I, I don't have a wording suggestion for you yet, so I want to take a shot. Good. Uh, see the. I think it's pretty hard to understand the intent of that sentence without an example. Yeah. Um, right, I agree because I didn't understand it until Michael elaborated on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to make your sentence. Could um... uh, I'll tell you what? Here's a suggestion. Um, <laughs> as other people observed, we need a sentence to elaborate on what that means. Like a for example, like the one that you gave, yeah. or something like that. Um, uh, um, but you phrase it generically, like um, uh. For example, an attacker might be able to infer the values of specific claims if it knew if it knows that uh, only certain uh, values are uh, accepted by the relying party. So is is Kathleen's point that? All, all of this stuff is subject to differential privacy analysis. I don't know if that's her point, but uh, that's yeah. probably true. For, for me, I guess I'm kind of in the, yeah, so what? Or, yeah, we knew that. Isn't that true about everything? Yeah. Well, well, sometimes the privacy considerations just needs to hit people over the head to remember things. Um, and... Uh, sometimes it's just enough to, you know, it's just to say, yeah, to the reviewers, yes, in fact, we've thought about this problem and we're aware of it and we don't have a solution or we're not making things any worse or. So are you OK with this sentence you just dictated yep. for me? Uh, yes, I think that sentence would have been sufficient for me to understand Kathleen's comment. And so if others are OK with that, I am. Okay, I wanted to say that Lawrence, I liked a lot of this text about the privacy strategies. Um, and I think that's something that uh, we could include. Um, I just think that we, I think that it repeats some of the other things. So I, I, I think I, we really just. Isn't there an RSC that documents the privacy strategies already? There is. It's the referenced in my comment. Like, I don't remember what the number is, but it's in one of my comments on this. So are we adding? I think it was on this one. Value on top of that or? So typically, there are standard plates of privacy configuration and yada yada RFC considerations apply. I think that is a standard text and other RFCs. Uh, so we have to check for overlap. Also, I like the strategy part, but I did not like so much was uh, the phrasing like uh, instruction on the addressing the reader level. Like, hey, you do this, and if you're not doing this, you have to do this. That is, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me, but uh, that was a style that is a little bit unusual for privacy consideration. Or maybe it's more readable. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it makes sense to try and avoid um, prescriptive advice. Yeah, 
I haven't had time to read through all the rest of it. I just started on it, um, but I haven't had time to read through all of the stuff yet. So I don't have an opinion on that yet. I but I don't like don't like the presentation so much. But but I would argue that my, my I'm not maybe the, not the authoritative voice here about readability. So. All right. So uh, do do I have some consensus to um, uh, to put to commit this? Yeah. This is the change one old request that I made to deal with with uh, Kathleen's changes. One. Okay, you're um, looking at sixteen. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I took this t text out of. Lawrence's uh, uh, pull request, um, and then we just added this one there. So, yes, I think this one is. There's nothing in here I don't like. So yes, I would I would soften it to just say that claims some claims, not every claim. Where's that? It says it. The... Oh yes, I I had missed that. I completely agree. I had said the same thing in the other one, in the other PR that we had open. So. It does it potentially. It doesn't say every claim okay. is. Um, and I think you kind of have to evaluate every claim in the usage use case and the usage scenario to know. I mean, it, we can't really. Maybe maybe you could say uh, many claims are potentially. Um, I, I might be okay with that, but yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, I, I, I basically think you have to look at every claim. I, I don't think you can, you know, because of things like the, uh, no, it's just the, the wording is saying, it's not trying to say that you don't have to look at every claim. It's saying that it's trying that the, the text seems to be asserting that, that there is some intrinsic property in claims that make it such that they all have, uh, you know, privacy, uh, implications and that's not true. I, I like the improved wording now and sounds like everybody can live with the mini claims version. So and I'm right that this is just a double use of the word end to end. That's just a typo. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh I, I meant end to end use case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I agree with Lawrence. It should say end to end space use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now it looks good to me. Okay, so this is Lawrence's stuff. This was postponed to afterwards. Um, do we want to have a conversation about this, or do we want to go? I wanted to have enough time for a round table uh, just before we publish the document. What's round table? It's to go through the list of people here, and I don't know if you have any other comments that haven't come up. Is there any other issues? I mean, uh, or do we think we've actually gone through? There are lots of issues still here. You know, is there anything else from Kathleen? This is the last one of Kathleen. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, so I'm going to close this one as well. Okay. Is there <clears throat> any other feedback on the list or otherwise? I guess that's my real question. Is there whether it's an issue or not? Was there any feedback from anybody else that's not captured here that might be low hanging fruit? Not that I am aware of. Andrew? Concerns here. Eric? Good to go. Sarah? I don't have anything. Thomas? Good. Way? Good, he writes. Okay, guess he can't talk. Um, it's probably quite late there. Um, uh, so, Lawrence, um, are you okay with publishing a revision as we are? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, 
There'll be another, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> not too many. I hope. We, haven't had, we haven't even entered working group last call. So by definition, there will be one more at least. Probably more. Yeah. Than. So yeah, yeah, consider yeah. that group last call. There'll be an AD review. Who's our AD? I think Where's it's Roman. Roman. Owen. All right. Well, that's good because that will remove one of the two security area director reviews uh, from later on. Uh, and then an ISG review. And I can't, I don't yeah. even want to talk about that one. So um, we still have more opportunities to get more pull requests in. But uh... yes. I think that we need to simply say, look, this, we can ha always improve the document. And we can say, okay, this is good enough for the working group to, to say, we're mostly done with this and go and push upwards. And um, as I said, we're going to have lots of, lots of, lots of pushback from, from things. Um, so um, don't fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I, I still have a lot of issues with the endorse endorsement and yeah. how the key is the key gets in and all that. And and my my thought there was to wait till this one was published. Uh, step back, take a look at it, and then create a pull request against that. So um, we have some more clear text uh, to work off of, and because I think I think that'll be the more efficient way to try and get through it. I mean, I was trying to collect comments up front and and get some consensus, but I think it's going to be better now if I just try for a pull request. I mean, some questions might be more foundational as to how do people think about things. And for if that's the class of things, then some type of uh, meeting presentation um, might actually be, you know, here's a direction, here's another direction. Do people like this direction? Do people have an alternate direction? Um, sometimes that can be more efficient than going straight to text. So yeah. that is an option. I think you did that early on in some of the rats group for uh, some of the other big open questions, right? So, you know, like, uh, uh, nested claim sets and things like that. I think, I think that approach was good there. So, yeah, one of the the, the trouble I keep coming up with in, in the endorsement discussion is that uh, I try to give an example that's illustrative, and everybody thinks that's what I'm pr proposing to standardize in detail. <laughs> I see. And by just writing text, that's then it's clear that I'm just this is the text I'm proposing, so we don't get, we get out of that trap, and that that trap has happened a bunch of times already. So I'm I don't here know. at least one potential danger there is that I think right now endorsements are out of scope. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah, that I'm not uh, sure about. Well, <laughs> I wonder. Well, if you're not sure, then that's actually a point of discussion, right? Should endorsements be in scope? If you want to ask that question, then you make the case for that. Yeah, I went and read the charter and and. Um, I don't think it mentions the term endorsement. It it does say that, I mean, my interpretation of that charter was that we're not going to write a detailed standard document for what the endorsement or the values or the all that. We're not going to write a detailed standard for that, but it doesn't mean we can't have like two or three sentences that describe it at a higher level. Oh yeah, right. No, no, this is Hank. I am not. I'm not entirely agreeing here. We are not doing this now. After rechartering, we might. This is up to the yeah. group, I think. Yeah, yeah well, and I, I know. Think. Some people may make the case that the uh, eat format is perfectly appropriate for endorsements, and I wouldn't disagree with such a plan if somebody tried that. So. Yeah, I, I also <laughs> provided already a small pitch for using an eat as an endorsement document, so that we can yeah. see why we should recharter at some point, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I, I would probably support that direction. So but. I can also imagine us having an entirely another document which says uh, an architecture for, um, you know, endorsements um, that, you know, explains how that part works um, in detail, um, whether it goes to protocol or not, level or not. I mean, it could do either. Sure. So, so the thing I really care about is the keys. But these are, again, actually not the endorsement stuff, it's key provisioning. And that is a very right. good scoped problem, I think. No, it's not key provisioning because I understand that word to mean uh, putting private keys into end devices. It's trust anchor provisioning. It's yeah, trust yeah. anchor provisioning into trust the verify. What does Lawrence want to do here? What keys? Trust anchor provisioning. Program? He wants to make sure that he knows which th devices he can trust because he can validate their their eats. So the key material is always here, therefore. 
No, it's not. Right. Thought it was public. Provisioning. Sorry, if you, if you provision a private key, it's provisioning. There's no other way to put. Or am I wrong? You can. You're not talking. You can. You can do, the whole, can, can do the whole thing with HMAC and symmetric keys. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, I agree with you. It could. It could be that the 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 validating key is a symmetric key. Yes, I agree with you. In which case, it's a secret, and which and, and you could have. Yep. Millions or billions of them and the the way there could be all kinds of KDFs and other kinds of things going on in the system and just and and I'm not making this stuff up. I mean, I actually know people are really doing this. We just I'm, I'm trying with this and I, yeah, I, I think we could do this somewhere. I'm first of all, not entirely sure this is rats, but if it is rats and then I'm, I would actually not oppose this, uh, it is maybe not endorsement. And we're back to where I'm, I'm giving an, I'm giving an, an illustrative example then you think I want to write a 35 page standards document. I, th I think the conversation is whether or not uh, tr trust anchor provisioning or the equivalent for symmetric case is the same as endorsement. And, and I think that they're not the same. Uh, I agree. I think that the, uh, as Hank said, I think that the trust anchor provisioning is not specific attestation. Technically, that would be a more general working group, not in um, uh, rats. Rats, of course, would need it, but so would just about anything else. And so that's why endorsement is very specific to attestation. So in that sense, an endorsement might be a subset and your endorsement might include trust and provisioning. It might not. I think they're different things. But. I just want to say that the, there, there must be some sort of trust anchor provisioning. I don't want Absolutely. to say what it is. I just want to say that there must be something like that. Yeah, I agree. We did the same thing in the uh, TEEP architecture document, and it talks about trust anchor provisioning, and it does that in a small number of sentences, like Lawrence is saying. So I would completely support that because we did that in the in the TEEP architecture document. So, and, and so I thought that was the goal of the trust policy section. Did we not do that there? I think there is some text there. Yes, but I um, I don't. Uh, it's not to the same level of uh, detail as is in the TEEP architecture document. So, yeah, going forward, we, we, can keep it off. we could steal. So, yeah, yeah. and we keep getting and, and, and the, the term endorsement keeps confusing because, like you just said, Ned, you don't think uh, you know a database of a, of, a, of a million symmetric keys is an endorsement. Correct. It depends on how to use. Okay, we, we have to define this here, and uh, we, it was already in long discussion with Global Platform that they have this endorsement token, and then that is unfortunately already set in stone, and we have to disambiguate that. So we are, we are very aligned with Global Platform by using endorsement here and saying, hey, this is not the endorsement token, but it's close. Here's our explanatory expositional text. And I think that's a good approach. Endorsement is actually a very intuitive term. And only the, the slightly confusing use of it in global platform is should not stop us from using it. I think it is very yeah, intuitive. I think it's very intuitive for some people, and I think it's very confusing for others. I mean, it certainly confused me because I, I mean, the answers I get of what's an endorsement and what's not an endorsement, <laughs> they vary by who I talk to and by day of the week. Yep. Uh, if you if you show me a written ex, a, a clear written description of it uh, then that we can work off of that's fine uh but i haven't seen that yet and i just keep seeing different i just there is section text there's a section here it's called and what i hear from you that is not a clear written description of the text uh, meaning of endorsement or endorsement sorry uh, so, so there is this section of endorsement. There is the definition, very small definition at the top of the text, and that's not sufficient to you. So, what so, is exactly not I, sufficient? So I, that's it, it's not what what need, what need, yeah, right. I think what we need is to ha have like a sidebar meeting where we throw out a bunch of, you know, use cases and some examples and look at each one and try and try and understand from the perspective of of you know the roles architecture what's going on so i think you know it's, it's sort of like the elephant problem right it's like everybody's got a different yeah i think endorsements is different from uh uh maybe uh different from trust anchor provisioning you could consider appraisal policy provisioning to be a bunch of information one piece of that information is trust anchor provisioning so there might be a couple of different elements of appraisal policy that's one way to phrase appraisal policy uh provisioning which is all all you know, a bunch of different things which include trust anchors 
Uh, you could also think of those as being disjoint too. I think of uh, one as being subset of the other, but you wouldn't necessarily do them in the same protocol. Right? You need a trust anchor provisioning mechanism, and you need a way to provision the rest of the appraisal policy. Um, but I don't think we currently t discuss in much detail trust anchor uh, provisioning, which is necessary. And that's that's the part where I completely agree with how Lawrence phrases. You got to have some consideration of that. I think the TEAP architecture document did that. It could be done in a separate section next to where some of the other ones are. I don't know, but that's something that I'm not going to do in the next you know, hour or so. But I think it is something that would be good to do in the next draft. So. And I think uh, of, of maybe uh, consolidate our view on endorsers is fine. We did this uh, the early beginning of uh, this charter phase, and it helped a lot, I think. So maybe we can do this after this ITF 108 uh, to, to yeah, address that point. Yeah. Into silence. Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a question about uh, low hanging fruits. We still have 15 minutes today, or I think the, the ro ro roll call about additional comments was completed, and I didn't hear any. I think they also wrote no. I didn't read that. And so we have 50 minutes then. Well, wow. you, you didn't ask everybody. Like, I didn't hear you ask uh, Lawrence or Hank or uh, Ned oh. or Michael. I, 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 actually, I actually didn't ask you because you were so vocal. Uh, okay. But I, I, we hadn't actually I'm finished. Good. <laughs> you, you didn't ask me, but I'm good anyway. So, yeah, I, I, I was asked. I consider myself asked. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, I mostly just uh, if you were already very loud, then I started to figure you would have spoken okay. up. Great. Great. So I figured out how to format 05 and I posted it. I can't make the Martin Thompson make file do its thing on this, but maybe someone will teach me one day. Just I can hide you. RFC done. Just like you have to add this tag and then it does the wrong thing six times. You have to change the file name. Okay, whatever. I, I, I split it out yeah, manually all the time. Yeah, that. So, so for like the TEEP architecture, we use our own make file because I know how to do that. I, either, so I, I, I exactly. Name. I'm just. I have like a six line make file that I use for everything else. Yeah. And I look at the make the make file, and I'm just like, it's like a thousand lines long. Like, what is it doing that my six line make file doesn't do? I think it's generating that whole like HTML view and other things that. Mine does HTML. It's yeah, like that's, a, yeah. that's, that's right. an extra one line, the, right? The, the revision yeah. tag to the GitHub. So the, yeah, the GitHub yeah. knows which level you are. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. So uh, I've posted 05. Okay. Um, and. Uh, so you're back to showing 6973 on the screen. Was there something uh, on there you wanted to talk about? No, I, you, you had mentioned it. And so I was pulling I, it open. It's because yeah. somebody else had mentioned, uh, isn't there a privacy considerations or FC or something that tells you how to write those? And that's the that's the one. I referred to it when I in one of my comments I mentioned anonymity set, and that's the one that defines anonymity set in this right. so, There you go. Okay, so that's good to have. So we have diffs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah. Read the blue text. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, scroll up for a second. Huh. Hand of the distribution is still on the table. Okay. That was supposed to be in the section, in, in the example that got reverted, wasn't it? I thought so. So I, 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 what I wonder is if HD exists in the table, but in no way in the text that references it. Probably. So I could remove it right away if you want, or we can just leave that for. I can remove it in the document so that it will be. It's a inconsistent wart. Just because you know a, ta a row of the table is added without the corresponding example or text that discusses it. So that's an oops. All right. Is it Thanks. not a thing? Which the, which is the oops that there's no text to discuss it, or that it's in the table? We omitted the, the uh, text for now. We, we 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 punted the text out of this particular version, meaning we punted it to after the IETF. And so that row in the table should be omitted and left in the uh, open pull request that Hank has. Okay, so I've removed it from the markdown for now. Um, okay. And if we decide to change something else before Monday, yeah. then I'll submit another. If you yep. notice something else that needs changing, then I'll submit again on Monday. 
Okay, that's fine. All right. Have a good weekend. Yep, you too, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.